Hello, my name is Amanda Alker and I'm a fifth year PhD candidate in the Shukuma Lab at San Diego State University. And today I will discuss bacterial settlement cues and how they influence animal metamorphosis. And when I think about metamorphosis, I think about it in the context of the seafloor, where many bottom-dwelling marine animals like tube worms, hydratinia, sea urchins, sea stars, and even corals release gametes or free-swimming larvae into the water column, where they then must develop for multiple days, probing the benthos until they're finally competent enough to find their place to irreversibly settle onto the seafloor in a process called metamorphosis. And metamorphosis is important because it drives ecosystem structuring. The successful metamorphosis uh, determines what the benthos might look like. Now, in our lab, we study settlement cues and how they can influence metamorphosis. And the cues can range from anything from larger scale processes and phenomena to um, things like crestose coralline algae and even bacterial biofilms. Now, bacterial biofilms have been known as inducers of metamorphosis for quite some time now, over 80 years from Zobel and Allen. And in that time, scientists have found a number of things about bacterial biofilms that make them better inducers than others. But in particular, we know that bacterial biofilm communities are important, so specific communities are better at inducing than others, as well as specific bacteria. So different species of ba bacteria are good at inducing metamorphosis. With this, I wanted to start interrogating what kind of settlement cues are produced by different bacteria, and then also, is there animal cue specificity? So of the cues that are produced, are, are they going to be universal, or are they only interacting with certain animals to give them that cue to settle down? To, to really start at um, answering this first question of what kind of settlement cues are produced by the different bacteria, it was important for me to characterize what's known about bacterial inducers of metamorphosis. And what we can do right now is separate those three, um, separate the inducers of and metamorphosis into three general categories. And that would be um, proteins and protein structures, small molecules and chemicals, and then purified cell surface products. And we'll start with proteins mainly because max or metamorphosis associated contractile structures are a very unique example of an inducer of metamorphosis, but will also set the scene for the methodology that we'll use to interrogate these other two um, inducers of metamorphosis down the road. So max are produced by a marine gamma proteobacteria called Pseudoaltermonis luteoviolacea, where they go on to induce tuber metamorphosis. Um, max themselves are evolutionarily related to type six accretion systems and bacteriophage. And what that means is that this tail-like structure is what is evolutionarily related to the type six accretion systems where they use a syringe-like mechanism to inject effectors across membranes. And these effectors we have been able to characterize have distinct functions. Some of them are loaded in the tube here while others are, onto, are loaded onto the tip. And in this case, they have different functions as well where uh, one of the effectors that we characterize is responsible for inducing metamorphosis while another effector that we've characterized kills macrophages. We were able to get this fine level of understanding of Max based on the approach, which is that we have a library of bacterial mutants that we can use to interrogate gene function. And to um, illustrate this a little bit, uh, a little bit deeper, we see that we can generate functional knockouts by using bacterial genetics to interrogate specific gene functions. And an example of this would be the wild type strain of Pseudoaltermonis luteoviolacea that's capable of producing Max, compared to the base plate knockout, which is the Mac B gene. Um, here you can see we've removed this Mac B gene and we denote this as Delta Mac B, which just means that we remove that gene. By removing this gene, the Mac structures can no longer form. When we expose them to tube worms, we see that um, wild type Max induce tube worm metamorphosis, while Delta Mac B does not. We then wanted to think about this uh, based on how the animal Q specificity would work for a cnidarian. And to do this, we tested a cnidarian model, Hydractinia symbiologic carpus and expose them to wild type strains of max, uh, or a P. luteoviolacea wild type that can produce max. And what we see is that max kill hydractinia larvae. But interestingly, when we expose the 
the larvae to Pilodiovalacea that cannot produce MAX, so Delta MAC B strains, we see that Hydroactinia actually undergo metamorphosis in response to Pilodiovalacea. This is quite striking, and um, from here, it, uh, it begged me to ask the question, how might corals respond in this same way? So are Hydroactinia a good model for this type of interaction? And really, I'm, I'm much more interested in getting, in getting an idea of how corals would respond and what the coral animal Q specificity is because corals are such important um, re, uh, ecosystem engineers. So the successful recruitment or the interaction of bacteria with corals is uh, very important and poignant and, and a poignant issue right now. Um, when we uh, when we expose the coral larvae to Max, and we did this very recently at the Smithsonian uh, Marine Station in Fort Pierce, Florida, we find that uh, wild type strains of Pilodiovalacea kill the uh, coral larvae in a very similar way that they killed the hydroctinia larvae. Um, and then interestingly, we also see a similarity to hydroctinia in the Delta Mac B strain, where we have uh, low levels of metamorphosis in the background, but everybody else, uh, all the other larvae are swimming and happy when the Macs are not produced. This to us shows that Macs are actually the causative agent in killing in this, in this instance, but also that P. P. Ludiovalacea may be able to produce another type of weak settlement cue for hydroactinia and corals. So to summarize this section for both uh, specificity and approach, we see that um, the max, while the max induce tuber metamorphosis, they kill hydroctinia and coral larvae. This, in, this indicates to us that max might be a more targeted inducer of metamorphosis where um, some, some animals may respond by undergoing metamorphosis while others might die. And this may have something to do with strain level differences um, and how they interact with the effector clusters or functional or non-functional max. So differences in the strains and the functionality of max in the environment may be important for um, understanding these interactions. Now to take this approach and to put it into, uh, and to further interrogate animal Q specificity, but utilizing the same methodology, I wanted to interrogate a different class of inducers or a different type of inducer or bacterial inducer of metamorphosis. So to do this, we, uh, we decided to start looking at chemicals or the ability of tetrabromoperol to um, induce to, uh, coral metamorphosis. Now. Uh, Tetrabromoperol is um, produced by a uh, by a subset of pseudoalternates, and in in Jennifer Sneed and Valerie Paul's paper, they found that a bacteria pseudoalternates PS5 produces um, tetrabromoperol, which can um, facilitate uh, coral metamorphosis. And taking the same approach that we used for the MAX, we, I, I asked the question of what would functional knockouts reveal about TBP-induced metamorphosis um, in corals and, and other animals? So uh, to make this happen, we first needed to establish PS5 as a uh, genetically tractable strain that we could manipulate. And to uh, once we were able to confirm that we could get PS5 uh, to work with our genetic tools, we were able to identify a target gene to knock out, which was the BMP2 gene. And what we can see is that this, non, this non-functional mutation removes the bromines from each of the four corners of this heterocyclic ring because BMP2 is a brominase. So this allows us to generate a uh, assay in the same way that we did for the max, where we could compare the wild type strain to the non-functional strain and do a metamorphosis assay to get the readout. Our hypothesis here would be that PS5 delta BMP2 does not induce metamorphosis. When we put this to the test, it worked. So we see a, um, a high percentage of PS5 uh, undergoing metamorphosis in response to wild type um, in, in, in response to the wild type strain, but the non-functional delta BMP2 strain uh, exhibits 
far lower in, far lower levels of metamorphosis. Um, this can confirm and, and reconfirm really that TBP is the main inductive cue in pseudoaltermonas PS5 uh, stimulated metamorphosis. And it also allows us to move forward with this type of approach in interrogating gene function. So to summarize this, we, we were able to make PS5 genetically tractable. We reconfirmed that TBP is the main inducer of metamorphosis. And interestingly, we find that hydroctinia do not undergo metamorphosis in response to TBP, which makes hydroctinia maybe not as great of a model to study TBP-induced metamorphosis, which is quite striking because um, as a cnidarian, you would think that they may undergo a similar type of um, signal transduction to get to metamorphosis, and this may not be the case. Um, in the future, we may be interested in looking at more general cell surface products as uh, inducers of metamorphosis. And these cell surface products include, um, can include lipopolysaccharide and outer membrane vesicles. However, we would first need to determine the animal cue specificity for this, generate the tools to be able to tackle this, and then also identify the genes that would be responsible for inducing metamorphosis and then target them with CRISPR-I. So I want to take a moment just to summarize what we've learned here by this work, which is that different bacteria can produce different cues. We see that the gamma proteobacteria that we studied, both pseudoaltermonas, um, produce maybe more specific inducers of metamorphosis, and that some species um, may produce more than one cue, like pseudoaltermonas luteobiolacea and potentially even um, pseudoaltermonas PS5. Um, furthermore, we do see high levels of animal cue specificity where Max and TBP are specific inducers of metamorphosis, while sometimes Max may kill other animals and TBP may induce robust metamorphosis in one case and not at all in, in an animal within the same phyla, which is very interesting. Now, this also leads us to um, caution that strain level differences may influence the ecological significance of this. And so now looking at the diversity of strains that exist in the environment and making the requ requisite manipulations to mirror that might be the next way forward to interrogate these animal cue specificities even more. To conclude, I'd like to acknowledge my collaborators and everyone that has helped me during this process. I couldn't have done it without them. I would like to thank my lab uh, and my PI, Dr. Nicholas Shakuma, everyone at the Smithsonian Marine Station that helped with the coral work. I truly couldn't have done it without you, especially with um, Jennifer Sneed, Alyssa Demko, Valerie Paul, and Yes Marie de la Flor. They've been amazing. And then I would like to leave you with, uh, I will be finishing my PhD this year and if you are considering postdoc offers, if you're interested in this type of work, or you think that we could, we would work well together, I am entertaining offers. So thank you very much, and for that, I will take questions.